ultrasound and diathermy. Ultrasound is a modality that transmits energy that falls in the acoustic rather than the electromagnetic spe spectrum. Energy is transferred through, through the piezoelectric effect, which is the vibrations from the crystal. So it's a form of conversion. Electricity from the machine is changed to acoustic energy with the crystal, which is changed to a mechanical energy, and then the friction from that mechanical energy through the layers of the skin and through the cells creates thermal energy. You do need a medium, either a water-based gel or you can also use water and sometimes they even have aloe in them. ERA is the effective radiating area. This is the total area of the surface of the sound head that actually produces sound waves. It typically matches the size of the faceplate or is slightly smaller. This allows you to decide what your appropriate size of treatment area is and it's going to be two to three times the size of the faceplate or the effective radiating area. It's measured in centimeters squared. BNR is the beam non-uniformity ratio. This is the consistency or uniformity of the ultrasound output as a ratio. The lower the ratio, the more uniform the beam. So the BN, if the BNR is greater than an 8 to 1 ratio, it is considered unsafe and it's going to increase your chances of burns. So the best BNR that they've found on machines is a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1. So the importance of this is decreasing the risk of burns. Cavitation is the expansion and contraction of air bubbles due to pressure changes in surrounding fluid due to acoustic energy. This can be good or bad. So you want to have stable cavitation when you're picking the settings for your ultrasound. The mechanical effects of ultrasound are going to be increased cell permeability, altered rates of diffusion of ions across the cell membrane, increased vascular permeability, stable cavitation, secretion of chemotactics, increased blood flow or lymphatic return, increased fibroblastic activity, phagocytosis, production of healthy granulation tissue, th synthesis of protein, reduction of edema, synthesis of collagen, tissue regeneration, and formation of stronger, more deformable connective tissue. Thermal effects of ultrasound, you're going to have increased tissue temperature, increased sensory nerve conduction velocity, increased motor nerve conduction velocity, increased extensibility of collagen rich, rich tissue, increased collagen deposition, increased blood flow or lymphatic return, reduction of muscle spasm, increased macrophage activity, enhanced adhesion of leukocytes to damaged endothelial cells. Current types of ultrasound are going to be pulsed, which pulsed is going to be interrupting the delivery of the sound waves so that periods of emission are interspersed with periods of interruption. So you have some on time and off time. Continu continuous is the sound waves are on 100% of the time and this increases the effects of, of getting an increase in tissue temperature. This on the machine is determined by the duty cycle. So you'll see it as 100%, 75%, 50%, 20%. It varies per machine. 100% is always, always going to be continuous. You can get thermal effects with pulsed ultrasound. So in order to not get thermal effects, you have to adjust your intensity and or time. Indications for ultrasound use are joint contracture, muscle spasm, neuroma, scar tissue, sympathetic nervous system disorders, acute conditions, mainly for pulsed ultrasound, trigger points, warts, spasticity, post-acute myositis ossificans, and chronic inflammatory conditions. Contraindications, acute conditions with continuous ultrasound, ischemic area, tendency to hemorrhage, areas around the eyes, heart, skull, and genitalia, pregnant women over the pelvis or abdomen, cancerous tumors, spinal cord or large nerve plexes, 
anesthetic areas, fracture sites before healing is complete, stress fractures, active infection, pelvic or lumbar region of menstruating females, and impaired circulation. The duration and frequency of treatments varies from 3 to 12 minutes. It always depends on the size of the area, effect needed, intensity, duty cycle, and tissue temperature increase. You can use more than once a day, but there needs to be at least 6 hours between treatments. Frequency. On the machine is going to be 1 megahertz, which is going to be a deeper penetration and can reach up to 5 centimeters. 3 megahertz is going to be superficial heat and it is 2 centimeters, but you can get an increased tissue temperature. The reason for this is because you're going to have more friction between the layers of the skin of the superficial layer. So that's going to increase the tissue temperature of that superficial layer, which can reach up to 2 centimeters. No minimum dose has been established to attain, obtain specific levels of heating. The lower the intensity, the increased time of treatment to get your results. Here's a chart that you can use in order to determine your tissue temperature increase. And these are the temperature increases required to achieve specific therapeutic effects.